Our next talk uh, will also be via Zoom, is by uh, Felix Plaza. You have, uh, say, 15 minutes. So the floor is all yours. Okay, and thank you very much for introducing me and giving me the chance to speak here. So I hope you can see my slides now. So I want to talk a little bit about lanthanide complexes and a little bit about open walkers. So here the first bit about lanthanide complexes. So I still call it misadventures because it's a bit harder than I thought it would be. And then I'll, I'll start talking to you about new work on Columbus. So basically here you can see an artist's depiction of what we're trying to do with lanthanide complexes. So here you have this complex with a europium on it. And depending on whether a, molecule, a water molecule or a nucleotide is bound to it, the emission spectrum changes. And that's how you can um, find, you know, use it as a sensor to detect the concentration of, of these anions. So in this case, the, for the computational support, we can compute geometries. That's fairly trivial. We get the binding energies. That's a bit harder. And the luminescence spectra is probably the thing that's the most difficult bit. And that's where we need open walkers. And that's what I want to focus on. So geometries are easy. Binding energies, don't want to talk about it. But it's, you know, first you have all these non-electrostatic solvent contributions. So you have to really think about your solvent model then you bind two things so basis set superposition error is strong you can try to mitigate that with larger basis sets and of course then you need these thermal contributions from translations rotations vibrations you can get those with a frequency analysis but the sad story is even if it take into account all these terms um, i'm still you know not even qualitatively correct. So, you know, the binding const, the pk binding constant should be about four pk units, but I get about 10 pk units. So, so, I don't know if anyone knows a trick to compute anion binding, please let me know. Otherwise, I think it's just something that's, that's difficult to do. So, but the main thing I want to talk about is if we look at the luminescence spectrum, the thing that's makes these lanthanides so special is that they have these, this very characteristic luminescence spectra where you see these different emission lines. So for example, here I'm showing one example complex where you have europium with different lines and you can see that you always start in this lowest quintet state and you go to different multiplets of, of this heptet F state. And, and you can see all the depending on when you change the quantum number J, you get different bands and these different bands have characteristic energies and the intensity and in the crystal field splitting of these bands changes with the different ligands. And kind of that's how we can use lanthanides to detect different molecules that bind to them. So, I mean, when you first think about it, those transitions are forbidden in two different ways. First, the spin forbidden because you go from a quintet to a heptet, but they're also symmetry forbidden because F orbitals are all, you know, odd parity. You go from odd parity to odd parity. So, so they're forbidden in, in two different ways. And, and kind of the thing I was wondering about here, if we can still kind of use a black box ab initio approach to model them. So usually people would use some phenomenological theories, something called Judd Ofeld theory, where you kind of fit things to experiment. But here I, I just wanted to, to see, can we do it ab initio with open walkers? And I, I don't think people have done that before. So, you know, for spin, we use spin orbit Rossi. So that mixes our, our quintet and heptet states. So we can, you know, avoid kind of, it's no longer spin forbidden because we include spin orbit coupling. And, and simply, you know, we get crystal field effects just by running regular computations. Because if, if our complex doesn't show inversion symmetry, then we automatically um, kind of, we, we avoid those symmetry selection rules. So, so that's what I tried to do. I don't know if we actually, need to use this single and ease or module to do any of this. Not, not quite sure. Maybe if someone has a comment about this, please, please let me know. So 
than for the computations that we're doing. So I, I kind of um, copied this from, from the Nick Chilton group. So, so we had this talk by Jakob Stab. So basically we do CAS CF with only the F electrons in the active space. So we have six F electrons and seven orbitals. Then we use an R ANO RCC basis sets, triple zeta polarized for the europium, double zeta polarized for the heteroatoms, and then just double zeta non-polarized for all the carbon sitting around. But basis sets, it's, it's not very sensitive to the basis set. And then I'm doing for the, to get the orbitals, I'm running CASA-CF for the heptad states. So we run state average over those seven quasi-degenerate F states, which is kind of nice because then we get, we um, average over all configurations. So, so then kind of formally speaking, you don't even have to diagonalize the CI matrix. So, so Ron Shepard called this all configuration mean energy type of computation. And then for the quintets, just to make it easier, we just run a CAS CI, then we don't have to worry about how many states to include in the state averaging. So, and and then for the intensities, it turns out that if 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 delta J, so you remember we have these different seven F states, and it turns out if, if delta J is not equal to one, then we can just use the dipole transition strengths, and then we can compute Einstein coefficients from those. And but if delta J is equal to one, then the transition is, is quadrupole allowed, and that's what a but dipole forbidden, and that's what we talked about a little bit yesterday kind of and then i use this thing called transition strengths for the second order expansion so some of those questions roland already answered yesterday but then of course the question is you know if, if you use this does your, do your results depend on the gauge origin so so you have to specify an origin for quadrupole moment and angular momentum integrals but but anyway we got some reasonable results there but Open Marcus doesn't compute your Einstein coefficients for these. So I'm not quite sure if you, if you can just do those manually. Anyway, those are some, a few technical things. What I kind of want to show you is, is what, so yeah, so, so what, what, what are the two complexes? So basically you have this large macrocyclic ligand with an antenna that's used for sensitization. And then we're comparing here, you have this binding site in, in your complex. And, and in the one case, we put a water molecule there. In the other case, we put a phosphate ion there. And you can think about it that the phosphate is highly charged. So putting the phosphate there will have a stronger effect on, on symmetry breaking. So, so when we say the states are initially forbidden by symmetry for, for, for symmetry selection rules, it's no longer going to be forbidden if we put this highly charged anion there. So then we can try to, to model the spectra. And on the left, you can see the experimental spectra for the pure probe and, and for phosphate bound. And, and here as my computed spectra. And I mean, the agreement is not perfect, but the nice thing is, you know, that I really just kind of pressed the button, ran ab initio jobs, no other theories. And I do get the correct band structure. So I get kind of this J equals zero here, J equals one here, then the two. J equals two, which is, is kind of this, this band where you see that it also increases a lot in the experiment when I move from water to phosphate, and that's kind of the, the spectral signature. And then for example, J equals three is very small, J equals four is big. So so so, so don't so so without you know without thinking about it too much, you just kind of press a button, run more or less standard open more curse, you get something that, that really looks like the spectrum and, and you and we see the right trends going from water to 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 phosphate, so, so I thought that was that was kind of encouraging. I mean, this, those are the first computations we ran on this. So, just thinking about how how to move on from there, and, and I don't know if any, any of you has comments about this. So, so, so the, the strange thing is that the oscillator strength are completely different between length and velocity representation. So, if you know, in the Morcus output tells you kind of number of problematic transitions and it's like you know 2000 problematic transitions because because also the strength are completely different between length and velocity representation don't know 
how to fix it if, if it matters. Then, of course, the thing that I'm always interested in is how do we characterize these different states? And I think we can do the angular momentum. That should be fairly easy. Then I, I guess the spin expectation value would be just a weighted average between quintets and heptets. And I, I don't know if anyone's ever looked at, at computing expectation values of, of kind of the J operator so that you kind of get the J value in your computation. I don't know if, I, if anyone's done that, and that will be interested. And, and kind of the other thing is, is it might be interesting to, to use something like natural transition orbitals or Dyson orbitals to actually represent those states graphically. So, so that's kind of future work here. And maybe maybe we should use single and ESO as, as kind of the open workers module dedicated to lanthanides. So, and then of course, higher level wave functions, CASPD2, or we could do spin orbit MRCI where we have the electron correlation and the spin orbit coupling in the same step. And this kind of takes me over to the next point of my talk because what's a really, really great code where we can run spin orbit MRCI and that's of course Columbus. So then I kind of want to say kind of what, what our new adventures when it comes to Columbus and its interface to, to open walkers. So generally speaking, there's an interface between Columbus and open walkers and it has been there for, for a long time. Basically, you can communicate via AO integrals, via density matrices, and, and via MO coefficients. So if, if we talk about kind of data portability, kind of the philosophy here is that actually Columbus uses different object files and modules from open workers to write the interface. So in, in principle, that makes it very efficient because you don't have to convert any file types. But it also makes the installation a bit more difficult because you really have to link both packages together. So we're not using something like the full CI dump file as an interface, which might, which would make it more portable, but but of course also slower. And you have kind of the driver from the Columbus side. That's the thing that I'm I'm mostly using. There's also a driver from the open Morcast side, and I mean, in principle, it does, you can run and Columbus in open Morcast, and then you get these jobs. But I, I, I'll, you know, I really have to figure out in which code base this is included. So, so I'll, I'll talk to Thomas Müller about it if, if he, where, where he has these things. So, so in principle, you, you can run it from 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 both sides. Then. Um, typical applications, so something we did are spin vibronic dynamics at the MRCI level because you have spin orbit coupling, gradients, coupling vectors, or if you want to wave function overlaps, and we have been using that for on the fly dynamics in shock. And, and kind of the other thing I always like to advertise are these spin vibronic coupling models because it's almost like you know you're cheating, you, you just run computations on one geometry and, and you get so much information. So this is also what we saw in this Jakob Stab talk on, on lanthanide complexes that, that really just just by parameterizing this first order spin vibronic coupling model, you can get so much information about your system in a you know in a, in a very cheap way. And the other typical application is when we're on large scale parallel spin orbit. MSCI, for example, for these lanthanide complexes I just talked about, then you can get the AO integrals and the MO coefficients from open workers because, you know, and, and because that, that's, that's of course quicker and then you can use Cholesky decomposition and all these tricks. And then you just feed the MO integrals into Columbus to run parallel MRCI. And, and for that, Columbus has this, this highly parallel uncontracted MRCI code where you where you can then once you have the MOs run run the job. So so it's released. I, I just posted this two days ago on, on GitLab. So so you can find you can find a link on, on GitLab where, where, where Columbus is and, and this is more or less kind of modeled on, on the way that open workers works. Um so right now I'm, I'm using a specific fork of open Morcas where that's kind of that, that you can use for the interface just to make sure that, that there's version compatibility between those. And yeah, and Yafogoan worked on this a little bit 
just to, to change the, the printouts. Um, so yeah, then and here are the future plans. Uh, of course, it would be nice to to connect Columbus and Open Morcus via via Git sub module, so that there's an, in a bit more integrated way. Maybe connect installation routines if I'm brave to put Columbus into a CMake, and and then some idea of testing. Of of course, it's nice to have some some joint testing so that you can't check in anything into Open Morcus that would break Columbus. Then, that would be nice if, if we set it up this way. So I guess the more general goal is kind of, you know, Columbus should be part of the open Morcus ecosystem. But the feeling is that, of course, people want to retain the distinct identity of Columbus. But I think that would be similar to many of these other codes that are kind of part of open Morcus, but, but, but you know, that still have, have the names like like Block or NCI or QC Marquis and, and so on. I mean, maybe, so from my point of view, it would make sense to have it in, in, a, in a similar way that you can call Columbus from Open Morcus, but on the other hand, that, you know, Columbus is, is still kind of, it's also retains, it remains as, as a standalone code. So yeah, conclusions are, um, yeah, and luminescent lanternite complexes. So it was nice to just with kind of the brute force spin orbit Rossi. I can get the overall spectral shapes and the kind of trends that I'm interested in. And yeah, so the total transition strengths. Okay, I think I understand those by now. And for Columbus, we um, yeah we made this open source release. And and of course, I mean this should also make it easier to to have a closer connection to to open more cars and then here yeah, are the acknowledgements and so I hope I didn't left my microphone on while I was talking and then yeah, thanks for listening. Thank you very much for your talk. Uh, I see one question by Roland. Well, not really a question. You, you had a question. I thought I could answer them immediately. Thank you. So, when you do the transition moments, you're using a, a representation that is origin independent by, by construction. You don't have to worry about how you place your molecular system and the coordinate system. The other thing you would have, you had a question whether you should use the length or the velocity representation. And my experience is, and it's both, both an empirical observation, but also a, a based on the, se the sequence of approximations you do, that it's the velocity representation that is the one that is the closest to the exact representation of the operator. So use the velocity representation. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, thanks, for, thanks for both comments. Yeah, okay. Just, yeah. Okay, I, I think that in the interest of time, uh, let's move on and let's thank Felix again.